So once you've got your alligator captured, once you've got the alligator legally restrained and alongside the boat, this is the time for the alligator hunting party to relax. You've got the alligator restrained, it cannot get away. Uh, someone needs to hold on to that line, that rope. And this is the time when you're gonna get ready to dispatch your alligator. Now legally, we've talked about what you can usually u legally use to dispatch your alligator. That's a shoulder fired shotgun using ammunition of number six shot or smaller. That's number sixes, sevens, seven and a halves, eights and nines of the like. And bang sticks with number six shot or smaller or a 38 caliber or larger. Now with that in mind, some of you may be hunting in the area of municipal city limits. And if that is the case, there may be regulations or laws against you discharging firearms within that waterway within municipal city limits. For that reason, you're also allowed one other uh, source of dispatching, and that is a cervical dislocation. Um, that is simply by using a large knife uh, that will be used to penetrate the spine directly behind the skull plate and the first cervical atlas bone. Uh, you'll see here in the photograph what the spine of an alligator looks like. Um, you want to insert that knife directly behind the skull plate between the first cervical vertebra separating the spinal cord. This will cause a sudden and instant humane death. And this is something that you can use um, if you happen to be in the city limits and are not allowed to dispatch a firearm. Now it's important to note as well, obviously if these are the only things that you can use to dispatch an alligator, then you cannot have in your possession at any time rifles, any other center fire ammunition other than what is used uh, in a bang stick, 38 caliber or larger. Uh, you may not use any other ammunition. That means number fives, number fours, threes, twos, ones, BBs, buckshot, all these other kinds of ammunition are illegal for you to have in your possession. Um, there are no pistols to be allowed uh, while you're alligator hunting. The question always comes up about the pistol requirement. If you are a sworn law enforcement officer, if you have a concealed carry permit, if you are on your boat, on your real property, and you wish to carry a handgun, you may use so. But you cannot use the pistol to dispatch your alligator. There are very obvious reasons why we don't want you to do that. Number one is safety. Another question that comes up about pistols is, can I use a pistol that uses a shotgun shell, such as a, a pistol that's commonly called the Judge. Uh, it shoots four tens and it shoots 41 Magnum uh, pistols, cartridges. The answer is no. You still have to have a shoulder fired long barrel shotgun. Leave the pistols at home, leave the rifles, rifles at home. Let's talk a little bit about shot placement. Uh, we have this depiction here that shows you the proper place to dispatch your alligator. One thing that commonly happens is people get a little bit excited after they capture their alligator and they maybe get into a little bit of a rush to uh, euthanize the alligator. If you dispatch that shotgun shell uh, into the skull plate of an alligator, uh, it may or may not be a lethal shot to the alligator. It may knock the alligator out unconscious only to become uh, active again later on. So for that reason, we try to direct you to the best, most proper way to dispatch your alligator. And that is that location at the center of the spine directly behind the skull plate as depicted in this photograph. Bring the shotgun barrel to close proximity of this location of the alligator about two to three inches from the alligator and discharge the shotgun shell. Now, this is the point where you've got the alligator legally restrained, he's not gonna get away from you. If the alligator is thrashing around and moving around a lot, take your time. This is the point where things actually get the most dangerous. Up till now, the most dangerous thing that you have encountered is navigating up and down these waterways at night in a heavily loaded boat with all this equipment uh, in the cover of darkness. But now you've pulled out a firearm. It is of utmost importance for you to be very safe here at this point. So 
if the alligator does not get in the proper position for you to make a safe uh, discharge of the firearm, then wait. Wait until the opportunity is just right before you discharge the firearm. Always keeping in mind, are there other people downrange? Are there other boats downrange? Is there anything unsafe about this point? If it is unsafe, just wait until it becomes safe. If you do discharge uh, a shotgun into the skull plate, um, it is my recommendation that you take the opportunity to discharge another round through the spine because you will bust the skull plate, but it may not be a lethal shot on the alligator. And if the alligator comes to life uh, later on while it's in your boat, that obviously presents a very dangerous situation. And for that reason is the reason why the alligator should be restrained by the mouth after you have discharged the dispatched the alligator. You can use something as simple as electrical tape, duct tape. Uh, you can even use cross sections of an inner tube uh, made into large rubber bands. But at any rate, never bring an alligator on board without uh, restraining the alligator's mouth. Understand that a restrained alligator's mouth cannot hurt you near as bad as an unrestrained mouth. So if you bring the alligator on board and there's any chance for uh, any danger, you're much better off to go ahead and restrain that mouth. Now, that also brings up the point where people are uh, trying to decide whether they want to harvest the alligator or not. So they may take the opportunity to restrain the alligator's mouth and bring it on board or bring it alongside the boat to get a measurement. And if that's the case, we have some recommendations about how to do that. And number one is you would want to get your restraining line on the alligator, number one, then bring the alligator alongside the boat with his back up against the gunnel side of your boat. In other words, his top of the alligator facing you with his belly facing away. You can then take a section of rope, loop it over the alligator's bottom jaw, pull it towards you in an effort to close the alligator's mouth. At that point, you can then take your hand and uh, hold the alligator's mouth only by the tip of the jaws. Do not hold the alligator's mouth shut by the side of the jaws. This is putting, your, putting yourself in a very dangerous situation. The alligator can very quickly and suddenly uh, move, thrust, thrash to the point that you may lose grip. And if your hand is along the side of the alligator's jaw, you are in a position where you could get bit. Whereas if your hand is at the very tip of the snout, uh, you're in a much better location. From here, one person is holding the alligator like you see uh, in the picture with the rope holding the alligator's head somewhat restrained with the jaw pulled closed. Someone holds the tip of the alligator's snout and then tape the alligator mouth shut. Even with electrical tape, three rounds of the tape on top of the tape, in other words, tape on top of tape as you go around, uh, it will become uh, secure enough to hold even the largest alligator's mouth shut. Alligators have the capacity of about 3,000 pounds per square inch to close their mouth, but they have very little strength to be able to open their mouth, and you can hold the alligator's mouth shut with one hand. Here's a video uh, that was once uh, given to me by one of our alligator hunters who had an incident while they were out hunting in the effort to try and uh, restrain their alligator. And you'll see that they make a vital mistake by bringing the alligator too far up on the gunnel side of the boat to the point where the alligator actually lands and flops into the boat. Uh, this is a very dangerous situation because the alligator's mouth has not been restrained yet. So these are some of the mistakes that can be made that you want to be aware of anytime you're trying to restrain the alligator or bring it on board. And while I'm talking about getting your alligator restrained, and uh, taping the mouth shut, uh, restraining the legs. Something you need to be very aware of. Should you at any point get bitten or injured while trying to handle one of these alligators? If you get bit by the, in, by the mouth, uh, if you get significantly scratched by one of their claws, you need to understand 
that there is a bacteria that can be found in alligators. It can be found in many of our wildlife species that are known in aquatic environments like turtles and snakes and even fish. But the bacteria is called Aeromonas hydrophila. This is a very dangerous bacteria. Uh, I've absolutely associated with alligators, particularly in the mouth. Uh, and if you are injured uh, by contact with an alligator, uh, it's very important that you get first aid immediately. Um, you need to apply a disinfectant. Uh, we recommend having hydrogen peroxide uh, on board at all times. It's a very good first, first aid treatment source uh, to use the hydrogen peroxide to cleanse the wounds, no matter whether it's very insignificant to the most traumatic uh, trauma. Um, you need to always seek the physician's care at any time you have significant trauma uh, from a bite or scratch that results from an alligator's mouth or their feet. This bacteria is uh, very resistant to cold environments. It's resistant to uh, air and uh, it's resistant to many anti, uh, antibiotics that you can be scheduled to. So if you get significantly uh, injured by an alligator bite or scratch, um, be sure you go to a physician and also take the time to explain to, to the physician that you know there's a unique bacteria associated with alligator bites. You don't have to be able to recite this name, Aeromonas hydrophila. Chances are you're not going to remember it. But you can explain that you know there's a unique bacteria associated with alligator bites and there's a specific treatment for those bites and injuries so that the doctor will treat you correctly. Over the years, we've had a number of officers. We've had agent trappers that have been uh, injured in the course of handling alligators and they have uh, sought the uh, care of a physician and even been put under the wrong schedule of antibiotics that became very dangerous. What happens is this bacteria gets into your blood and it will cause uh, a blood poisoning that will kill you. There have actually been a number of people in the state of Florida that had been attacked by alligators that had insignificant trauma as a result of their uh, attack that were under physicians of care and actually died later on because of this poisoning getting into their bloodstream. So should you be injured and uh, you wake up a next day or two with significant pain or redness or swelling around that area, get to the emergency room and be sure to get under physician's care.